Welcome back to the 4000 series series where we look at some of the 4000 series CMOS devices. Today we're going to be taking a look at the CD4060. This is a ripple counter and I think the easiest way of looking at the ripple counter is as a divide by counter. So essentially this IC takes in a clock input. Now this, in this case it's coming from a crystal but it can be from a resistor capacitor timer but we'll talk a bit more about that in a second. So it's taking it from a standard watch crystal that's 32768 kilohertz and divides it down with the use of chained flip-flops inside the IC to create 10 distinct outputs. Um, and they're based on the incoming frequency, which could be variable. Um, so let's have a little look at this very quickly with the use of this little LED. So we have lots of different outputs on here, the 10 different outputs. And some of these are a lot faster than others. So we're currently on Q12. I could go one more along and it will go a bit slower. And then once more along and it's the slowest it's going to go. This is a two hertz signal coming out here. But if we go up any higher on this row, you won't be able to see any flashing whatsoever because the frequency is just too high. Just over here, we've got Q10. You may be able to de detect something there, but it's not very visible to the camera. So let's have a little look at the schematic before we go any further. So this is the schematic for the CD4060 circuit that I've knocked up there. Um, and you'll see we've got the 4060 here. We've got our Q outputs and then we've got some inputs here. We've got pin 11, which is our clock input. And you can see our crystal over here. This is a 32768 standard watch crystal with um, our loading circuitry. And then we also have our resistor capacitor timer here. So this is our discharge resistor, I believe. Um, and that's about it. It takes uh, three to 15 volts in, and then we've got our ground there. So what are these Q outputs? Well, let's look at it on a frequency counter first, and then we'll look at exactly what's going on. So if we bring our circuit back in, and we'll bring one of these cheap frequency counters over, and let's plug that in. Hopefully we'll be able to see this and we'll start probing around with our signal. So let's, um, let's put that on there. We know, well, I know that's two Hertz, so we can put this in line and try and read it. Sorry, four Hertz. There's two Hertz. So let's, dim the lights a little bit shall we so it's a little bit easier to see and then we'll jump along the rows so we've got um, one here looks like it's constantly on but actually it's reading 512 hertz a bit further along on q5 we've got 1024 hertz next up we have 256 hertz and then next up we have 2048 hertz now we can go all along the row here and find all of them this one is 64 hertz this one is 128 hertz and then this one is 32 hertz so we can look at this on a little bit of a table so that we can see exactly what this is doing. So we've got our IC here and you can see the Q outputs. Now there is one missing. You can see that Q11 doesn't exist. Now, if we take a look at this diagram here, you can see that Q4 is essentially saying two to the power of four. So two times two times two times two is one sixteenth of the incoming frequency. So it's like saying divide by 16. Uh, Q5 is also divide by 32, divide by 64, divide by 128, divide by 256, and so on. 
So let's have a look at our original frequency. We'll use this calculator to figure out what we should be seeing on Q4, for example, uh, where we saw that two hertz. So 32, ooh, 32, seven, six, eight. Oh, it wasn't Q4, it was Q14. <laughs> divided by 16384 equals two. So we're dividing that frequency down so much that we only get two Hertz. Let's look at another one and see if we can figure this out. So currently our circuit is sitting on 2048 Hertz and our pin is currently sitting in Q4. So let's have a look at that. So Q4 is divided by 16. So let's do 32768 divided by 16 equals 2048. So we can see that it does work. So what would you use this kind of circuit for? Well, um, I currently use this in one of my projects to do a one hertz time base. Now I did that with a 4060. I divided the uh, time base down to two hertz and then I used a JK flip-flop, a CD4027, to divide it down once more so that we get one hertz out. So really useful time base, we've got a one hertz output, but you could also use this using an RC timer. So you can use pins nine and 10 as RC inputs. So resistor and capacitor inputs, or it might be the other way around. Um, so instead of using a crystal, you can use a much less accurate, but a lot cheaper uh, resistor capacitor timer. And then select these outputs as a timer for your circuit. So you could have a rotary switch or a slide switch that selects between one hour's time or two hours time or 24 hours time. So it's actually really versatile without needing a microcontroller. You can create your own time base.